This week I thought I'd allow you to join me in my day-to-day -day running of Hidden Valley Bushcraft. One of the tasks we've got to do is to replace the parachute. Now there is a trick to being able to make your parachute uh, shelters stay up all year round. Now I've got a, a couple of bods coming to help me today. Here they are. Hi boys. Um, and, and Meg. This is suspended on an old tow, military towing hitch. Piece of rope here. That then goes back off on itself, all the way back up to the top. So the first thing to do is to take that down. We're gonna cut all the attachment points, but we're going to leave them on the trees because then that's gonna show us where we need to uh, retention this thing. As you can see, the chute is not in a good way. There's really not much grace in this process. What the boys are doing now is they've undone all the attachment points. You can see on this little piece of blackthorn, at the top there you've got the hook which has come down that's basically the assembly there that just hooks up and goes on this thick gauge hanging basket and that's kind of a key piece of the puzzle next job we're gonna to have to do now gather up all of the chute which is trying to be a parachute in the winds which are slowly picking up here and then we're going to fold that one up and get that into the bergen at the same time inside here is our new parachute so we have to get that one back out Okay, so just so we can have a closer look at what we've done here, we've just come in and we've come just off the rim up to the first join. And all I've done is made a very simple double knot where you put a, you put a granny knot in there and then I've, I've finished it with a granny knot on top to lock it off. See this one here is a little bit low, you need to get that up to there so they're all on the same level, otherwise it, it, can, it can get a bit wonky. If I tie them to the rim and there's a big storm, I've had it in the past where I've found the, literally the, um, the hanging basket just crushed. The strength of two of them together will work better for me. I think it's much of a muchness, but the point is these things stay up for three years at a time. And the next thing we're going to have to do is then we're going to pick up the chute and orientate it so that we've got a bit of a doorway coming in here. And in an ideal world, a bit of a, a doorway walking through the camp. The next thing to do now is we'll give this a gentle pull just to see how it raises up. Is that coming up okay? That's coming up fairly evenly now. The biggest problem I've got, not coming from a big overhanging branch in this smaller woodland with small understory is the fact that I've got this tree coming in here, which means I'm gonna to have to run a split through the parachute and fold it round. Jim is just packing away the two pieces of panel that we've cut all the way around the outside. We've cut those off because otherwise the circumference of this particular parachute is so great that it would extend far over the area I'm trying to cover. As we don't have the height here on this particular site, we need to try and maintain a decent working form for this to stay up all year round. Jim is busy making up some little wooden uh, noggins like this. They will get put on the inside of the uh, parachute edges as thus and tied like that. Now what that means is that we end up spreading the weight quite nicely through the chute. We're now going to pull this all the way up to the top in a sort of north, east, south, west fashion. We're going to pull taut those four to start with and then work our way around. And so we are now at a stage where it's starting to look like a classroom once again. It's actually a fairly shallow pitch. The biggest thing that we have to worry about down here is the fact that the, the wind comes through the valley, comes thundering over the top, drops down and comes up this hill. Trying to match the gradient of this chute front to the gradient of the ground means that the wind goes either side and tends not to scallop as badly into here. Okay, so we've got a bit of a snag, which is the tree itself. We're gonna stretch out these last couple of bits this way and then pick a panel and from this height up here, I'm gonna run a knife down and we'll go for a wrap around. This will also allow some of the wind as it's being fired into here to find its way out. We've gone through one pack of 550 paracord. We were using something called Wild Elk. 550 paracord made in America. Just show us oh. the sketch, gents. You take one of these noggins, the noggin goes up inside there and then fold that up so that it completes on itself. And then we twist it round so it can't escape its little pouch we've made for it. We put a loop in the top of here. All I've done is put a tiny little loop in the top of there. And then I'll find the other end, which is oh, inside tied off. On. Okay, and it's as simple as that goes through there and then back on itself. 
the hardest part is when you've got a brand new pack of paracord and you're just pulling away for ages. There we go, right, so that then ties on that. Rob, if you let go now, it should be held. And it's, it's, the, the pressure's coming on it from multiple points. It's not just running through this singular ridge. And then, wow, the wind's trying to get into that already. So we've got to get this over to where the last one was. Yeah. Okay, so the lads wouldn't allow me to use the wooden ladder, so we had to use an aluminium one. It is a lot safer. I do see what they're on about. Here we go. So we're now here and here. The last thing to do is work out where this cut's going. I'm actually going to tie this one here off to the cabin because we never had the cabin here before. So that one there is literally going in a straight line, which is what you really want to be doing is using the line that the parachute is giving you. To, to, to align with the nearest upright. Here comes the tricky part where we've got to put the cut in and basically all our efforts will be rendered completely useless if I get this wrong so no pressure. What I'm thinking is I need to put a cut from where this elbow kicks out here and run the knife down the inside seam where we will then put a small block on the inside and wrap this around the back and what's left here, we will wrap back past it. So the fixing points are likely to be on top of the wood store, there and over here. We basically need to encompass the back of this tree. Okay, I'm just triple asking myself whether this is the right one to cut. Because <laughs> what I'm worried about is as we, as we bring this out, this is gonna come off, off center more and more and more to the point where this one now looks like the one you wanna cut. I'm actually wondering if I cut this one further over. I mean, there's that much, there's about a foot difference. Okay, instinctively, instinctively, I'm gonna go with my first decision. And if it's wrong, I'll just have to wear it. Like everything else in life, there's an important lesson had to be had here. If you make a mistake, you'll learn from it. All right, I'm gonna start cutting here. I'm gonna cut right up to there. Okay, here we go. Now you'll notice I'm cutting this side because I want the strength that comes with this ribbon. I remember the first time I did this, it felt so alien. Why are you cutting a brand new parachute? All right, we're gonna to go to here. Right, we're going to go to there only and stop there. Wrap around the tree for me. This is what I feared. Now, have we still got... Okay, yeah, brilliant. So, we're going to have to tie an end to there. That's going to go off at that angle. So this rope is really important because when you're running courses in the depths of the darkness of the, the evening and here in deepest darkest Somerset, you might want to hang a... a a little torch or a little light or something and extend the kind of longevity of your craft time and being able to see safely and use tools. That one will go to there and then this other one is going to have to wrap through or underneath it. <laughs> Except we can't reach it now. Okay, got it? And so that one will then wrap underneath that one like so and come around the tree as best we can like that. You want to shut that down so that that gap now is minimal. Still letting air through. But this one will basically tie to here. So we'll get that one in. And that's hopefully shut, shuts down that gap and you keep a uniform height all the way around. So this one will attach in there to the existing. So we've joined the two together. I'm going to place one over the other Put one of these little tabs on the inside, fold the whole lot up to start with. Right, and that really wants to be tighter under there. What I'm most interested in is getting this. We need to make sure that we've wrapped that sort of well. Tricky stuff. 
point to know, get everything out of your way before you start. It's literally made its own knot. There we go. Right. Keep, keep pulling that, Tim. What I'm wondering is if I can tie two in together. Tim? Yeah. We'll grab that one and we'll tie it to the rope. And that'll shut it down. Cunning. Hey? It's, it's, a, it's a game of, of cunning and skit. Oh, what have I done now? I've done something. I'm not sure what I've done. Why does that feel like it's not? This, this is the most higgledy piggledy. <laughs> right, okay. So we're doing all this as we've got a group in tomorrow uh, from a local college who are going to be learning about fire making and whittling. So we're going to be doing a green woodworking workshop and some fire making as well. And that will include fire by friction. And now we've actually got somewhere that's dry to work under that will help massively given that tomorrow could, could not rain. You're not really sure. Don't even trust the weather reports here in the UK anymore this time of year, quite frankly. Wherever you are in the world, let us know what your weather is like. I always like having those conversations. Leave a comment in the box below. And um, we've almost got on top of this job now. Jim's just helping to kind of close down that angle around the tree. This isn't the norm. This is a very unique setup and it's taken me a number of years to get to this kind of level of, of knowing how this particular site goes. But now we need another noggin. noggin. We got any more? So to make these noggins, you're looking for sort of inch diameter. Something like hazel is ideal. If you haven't got any hazel where you are, just go with any straight timber and you just want a little, a little sort of off cut like that. If you really wanted to go to town on these, you could literally chamfer all the edges over. Okay, you could do something like that, make them all really soft and rounded. Fold all this corner in. Now the danger here is that we don't have a strong bit of ribbon on that side. So I'm gonna move this slightly further up and try and incorporate more ribbon from that side and fold it around and twist it. Hopefully it's gonna stay up inside here. It may or may not. No, see it's trying to pop out already. Try again. Tuck under itself a bit. Just keep winding it up. Okay, we got it. So we've got one side and we've got the other end. Poke that through there. You pull that for me. This is so much easier when you've got more people to help you. I've done this process before with, with one other and it's been really tricky. Um, okay, so now, now we're gonna kind of go, again, thinking about garroting height. Don't wanna do that to someone. So we're gonna go slightly further up. What happened there? That's just flicked off of there. That's just flicked off, is it? In an ideal world, anytime there's a branch or something you can fix under, that, that's a helpful thing. They're all kind of ever so slightly different versions of themselves each time. This is a different parachute to the one we did last time. We had kind of a classic sort of parachute that somebody would jump on, like a, known as a round. And for some of the knots that we've used today, we did a, a bespoke video on, uh, on knots and knot tying for, for bushcraft. So check that video out. All I'm doing here is going back on myself, I'm going around the tree again. And then when I feel I've, I've suitably got this caught, I'll just stick my finger under here, wrap under, over the top. And this little loop here, I'll normally try and find something to fix to. And if I can't, I'll stick a, a twig inside and then you can just pull that nice and tight like so and then if you want to finish it off so it's not going anywhere for a while pull all of this all the way through all this stuff you can tidy up afterwards one of the great ways of tidying up a length of rope you've got left over so a couple of ideas for you if it's something that you want to keep dry and it's going to be up all year you can just put a little loop in and start pulling a loop through 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 a loop this is called dutch lacing okay this is a nice way to finish off a, a little piece of rope that can hang down and the wind can move through it and obviously you've you've reduced its size and length the other method i would advocate you using would be to use hanking so hanking basically involves going around my thumb and my little finger let me get that start point correctly okay so it's come up and around my thumb and this little tail is out the back now what this means is I can start to hank this up in a figure of eight okay keep the tension on there until I get close to the end now when I take my hand out I can wrap to the middle a few times 
Okay, and to make it stay, I just literally put a twist in there and pop that through and it, it'll, it'll hang on itself quite nicely. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell now that we've finished tweaking and adjusting all of the bits of the parachute and all of those kind of tie off points. I'm pretty happy this is gonna last us hopefully another three years. Moving through the camp, we've then put the DD Hammocks XL up, same sort of sketch. Okay, figure of four, slippery adjustable up here, uh, event knots tied out. And I've gone for it relatively taut, but I've built in a weakness on this end where I can just take the pressure off here. Okay, and this just allows this thing to move in the wind, and takes the, uh, the worst of it out. Now, the reason I take that pressure off, obviously when I'm running a course, I'll just nip that back up. Okay, and on that slippery sliding knot, that holds itself beautifully. But it just means when I'm not in the camp, okay, I'm not trying to fight against Mother Nature. I fully accept that uh, having a bit of give in here is gonna increase the longevity of this thing. There's nothing I can do about UV light damage. That's just another natural part of the puzzle. But what I can do is create a small weakness in one corner. So I'm gonna be running a course tomorrow. So around this, very sight here, the fire will be on, gonna have students, we will be making fires and green woodworking, making feather sticks, tent pegs, learning about how to use a knife, axe and saw safely, finding materials from the wider woodland, probably do a bit of fire by friction. So I expect my basket to be filled with feather sticks by the end of tomorrow. Hopefully we'll be full. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Nick Goldsmith from Hidden Valley Bushcraft and we'll see you again next week for another video about... have to wait and see. Thank you.